All right, so in this lab, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of creating uh, map products from aerial imagery, we're going to use uh, photographs of an object to construct a 3D model of that object using Metashape. And so we call this close range photogrammetry. Same concepts, same principles, uh, structure from motion. We're just uh, doing it in a slightly different application. So the first thing we want to do here is get some photos added into uh, our project. So I've got all these here. Um, I'm going to add these in. And uh, these are, uh, we can take a look at one of them here. So, so this is a little uh, Darth Vader Buddha statue that I have. It was made on a 3D printer. And uh, I've got it sitting on a, a turntable here. Uh, with some markers on it. Um, this is a process that we've ironed out over a lot of trial and error. The close range photogrammetry stuff is really cool. There's a lot you can do with it, but it's a pretty finicky process I've found. And so we're going to work through uh, in this lab the, the, the process that I've figured out that, that sort of works reliably for what we want to do. So uh, we got a set of photos in here. Uh, they look great. Um, we're going to uh, align those photos, but the first thing that we need to do is actually uh, tell Metashape what coordinate system we're working in. And, and normally when we bring photos in, they're in this WGS84 uh, coordinate system. When we work with map products, that's generally the base that we start with. However, that's not appropriate for this because you know that they're just pictures of a uh, of, of an object sitting on a turntable. So the the camera hasn't moved; the object is rotating uh, as we're taking the pictures. So we need a local coordinate system here. Um, the one that uh, Metashape gives you by default is this local coordinates for meters. Um, that doesn't have the level of precision that we need to do volume estimates. So we're going to uh, ultimately use this local coordinates for millimeters. However, that's not one that's a, a default uh, coordinate system. And uh, uh, I created a, uh, a coordinate system file for that. You can download that for the, for the lab. And uh, so I just selected on more. And here in the select coordinate systems, I'm going to click this uh, folder icon for loading a, a coordinate system file. and. Uh, here it is. This is the one I want right here. Uh, local millimeter uh, projection file. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And it's going to do its thing. Yeah. So, so basically it's like, okay, this is a local coordinate system. It's a Cartesian system and its units are in millimeters. Uh, so I can hit okay there. Now it'll show up in my, in my list here. Actually it'll show up all the time there. So I can just choose that as I need it. Um, now, I selected that as millimeters, but notice all of these like accuracy things here are still in meters. So what I need to do is actually click OK. And notice it updated all this stuff. And then if I open the uh, reference settings box again, now all of these things are in millimeters. OK, so uh, so we can set some some sort of parameters here. Um, you know, the, the, the camera, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm within, you know, like five to 10 centimeters for that. So I can set that to 100 millimeters. My marker accuracy is actually really, really good on this. So I can set that to 10 millimeters, um, which is just going to help sort of dial the model in a little bit more uh, for it. OK, so now I've got my coordinate system set. And there's one more thing that I need to do before I go to align these photos, and that is to deal with this background information. So as I move through these photos, this portion of it, the turntable portion, is changing uh, with each photo, but the background information is not. And so I need to instruct Metashape to exclude that background information. Otherwise, it's going to mess with my, uh, with my photo alignment. Okay? And we're going to do that by creating a mask. And uh, so up here in the toolbar, uh, I'm clicking on this little triangle button here, and I want this intelligent scissors uh, tool. Okay, and then I can come down to my photo and uh, just start clicking here. Uh, my computer's being a little bit slow. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to go ar around the outline here. I don't need to be super precise. 
Okay. I'm trying to keep it on the actual white portion here around the, the target. Okay. And when I get back, I can uh, click on that uh, loop down. Well, it I got too far ahead of my, my slow computer here. So let's do it again. We'll come around. All right, so I've closed the loop there on that. Now, at this point, it has everything that's within here selected, but I actually want to select everything that's outside of it so I can mask that out. So up here in the toolbar, here's an invert selection button. So I'm going to click that. Okay. Now it's flipped it around so all of this stuff is selected and the stuff that's in the middle is not selected. And then I can click this button up here, the add selection button and it uh, creates my mask. Okay, so you can see that the grayed out area here, that is excluded now. That's masked out from my, from my processing, so it's only going to look at the area that's in here, okay? And down on my photo tray, I can actually click this show masks button, and it will say, okay, this photo has a mask, but none of the rest of them do, all right? Because this is a turntable situation, right? And so the background's not changing, only the thing in the middle is changing. I actually only have to create the mask for one image and then it will apply it to all the other ones, okay? So that's actually pretty, pretty handy. If this were a situation where like the object was stationary and I was moving around the object, then I'd have to create a mask for each one of these photos, which can be kind of a drag, all right? Okay, so now I have my mask in place. At this point, I'm ready to align my photos. So uh, workflow, align photos. Uh, here, normally we would, we would choose um, source, right, for our um, uh, option because we'd have GPS information, but there's no GPS information for these photos, okay? So I need to choose a, another one. And because these were turntable photos and each photo is just like, right next door to the to the you know to the pre preceding one then i can choose sequential here okay i want to make sure the reference pre-selection is off and then under my advanced features okay uh normally this would be set to none but i'm going to set it to tie points so it's going to apply the mask to cre to finding any tie points between the images so it will not select tie points within this kind of background area, okay? And so from here, um, I can go ahead and let this rip. Uh, this will take a few minutes. There's, I think there's only like 29 or 30 of these photos, so it's not gonna take too long, but I'll pause here and then we'll resume when it's done. All right, so my alignment finished and uh, I've got little green checks next to all my photos, which makes me happy. That makes sure, means all of them aligned. And if I flip over to my model view, and zoom out you can see that uh, all my photos align just how I thought they would so I've got this nice ring of photos and I've got my sort of shape in the middle okay um, now the orientation of it is off right because uh, it, it has no concept of like what's up and what's down if there's no reference information for the photos themselves and that's where the uh, the this sort of target and these uh, uh, yeah, these little targets on the turntable are going to come in. So the next thing that I want to do is actually have Metashape find all of these targets. So up under Tools here, we can go to Markers and Detect Markers. Okay, um, You can uh, set the tolerance up really high on this. They're circular 12-bit targets, and you can leave the rest of the options as default. And uh, go ahead and hit OK here for this. And it's going to scan through all of these photos and uh, find all the targets that it can. And it will create um, these markers for it in the, uh, in the reference window here. So it should take, there we go. OK, and uh, yeah, so you can see it actually did a pretty good job at, uh, at finding these things. And then we have like super precise uh, positioning of those targets. Now, for some reason, I don't quite know why, it has a hard time with target two. 
Um, so in that case, right, we've got the little green or the grayed out flag. So I can just grab that one and then, you know, put it in the right spot. So you can go through a couple of these uh, images here and, uh, you know, fix the ones that it didn't do a good job on. I don't know that I'd really um, knock myself out too much on that. This one here, target one, it's not picking up because a portion of it was obscured by Darth Buddha's head here. So, um, so but I can, I can go ahead and tag that one. Um, yeah, this one. So target six, it just can't see, right? So it's doing a reasonably good job uh, all the way around. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and I think I'll just leave it uh, at, at that for right now. Okay, so, so we have our targets. That's great. Now we need the uh, actual, quote, ground control information for that. And we, we created this uh, target or this sort of map for the turntable so that we had a Cartesian coordinate system so we could actually give precise uh, coordinates for the, the turntable, which would allow us to scale the objects on here and get like accurate volume uh, measures for this. So. So we have a ground control file for this, and uh, so we can just import that uh, here. And yeah, it's this turntable targets CSV file. And uh, we'll load that up. Just make sure that your uh, columns, you know, align right here. Um, this looks pretty good to me, and we're starting a row, uh, import row two. So, oh, wait. Uh, coordinate system is in millimeters, local millimeters. Got to make sure and change that. Okay. And then go ahead and hit OK. And you can see it's added all of that sort of uh, information in here. Uh, that all looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and just refresh that. And you can see our error then is 0.26 millimeters, which is pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Um, so, that gives us our uh, um, yeah, ground control information. Now if we switch back over to the model and reset the view on that, now you can see like we actually have the top down view of it, right? So it knows where the model is, is oriented in, in space there, okay? Um, so yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. You know, we could do some, some light sort of point cloud optimization in here. We don't have a ton of points to work with, so I don't think I'd do anything really aggressive there. Um, the, uh, the next thing we probably want to do here is uh, kind of get rid of the, the, the sort of excess stuff on the sides. We're not really going to need that. So uh, we can come here to uh, resize the region. And uh, let's turn the cameras off so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so this is the box in which it's going to sort of process everything. So I'm going to kind of dial that down here pretty close. This is going to speed things up. It's also going to make it easier for us in later steps to, um, uh, to get the volume sort of estimate that we want to do. Okay, so that looks pretty good. However, I was doing this earlier and trying this, and it kept cutting Darth Buddha's head off. And I just like could not figure out what was going on because the sparse point cloud had some points on his head. And, and well, it turns out that I had dialed the box in looking top down, but I hadn't actually looked at it from the side. And so if we switch to the side, notice here that it's actually not tall enough, right? So it is, it's gonna cut his head off again. So. I need to just grab this and extend it upwards uh, a little way so that we actually make sure that we get all of, uh, of Darth Buddha, otherwise he's gonna be a, a little headless statue for us, okay? So, um, yeah, so at this point, uh, we should be ready to go. Now in um, a uh, mapping project, at this point we would like create a dense point cloud and then do an elevation model, right? And, and for this lab, we're actually gonna do a mesh. Um, and we haven't really worked with meshes much before, but, but in this sort of application, they actually work really well. Okay, so I'm gonna build a mesh here. And the source data are the, the depth maps uh, that it's gonna calculate here uh, for the images. And we can leave these options pretty much as their, as their defaults, okay? Um, you can play around with these if you want, but I think the defaults are gonna work fine for us now. So I'll go ahead and hit okay. This may take a minute, so I'm, I'll pause here and then we'll come back when it's, when it's done. All right, so here's our model that's done. We can we can zoom in and take a look at this thing here. So it looks like we did a reasonably good job. Um, if 
for uh, for Darth Buddha here. If we uh, wanted to, we could actually come up and build a uh, uh, texture or add a texture to this model. Um, I'll go ahead and run this. I'll, I'll pause here while it does it and then uh, just show you what the result is. Okay, so here's the textured model and you can see it just added more detail here, right? So we can actually see, you know, the the print lines and stuff on, on Darth Buddha here. You know, this was not the, the best 3D print in the world, um, but you know, you, you get the idea, right? Um, and uh, we've done a pretty good job. I mean, his, his, his head's not real, rep, real well represented here. It looks like he lost a lightsaber duel and got his head staved in at, at one spot, but you know, it'll, it'll work for our purposes. So the next thing that we wanna do here is actually get a volume estimate for, for Darth Buddha, okay? So to do that, I wanna do a couple of things. First, let's look at him from, from straight above, okay? I need to get rid of all of this uh, this sort of ground target stuff here, right? And there's a couple ways I can do that. I can use the selection tools here and uh, just kind of draw a, uh, a circle around him here. Um, not trying to get too close. Okay, so it looks all jaggedy because these are the actual like triangles that make up the mesh. Um, so I'm gonna come up here to to edit and then invert that selection. And now I'm just gonna hit the delete button and get rid of all of those uh, uh, outside, you know, sort of uh, spots there, right? And then I can, you know, I can do the same thing. I can use this tool and just kind of select and delete uh, things now. And uh, I'll go ahead and just sort of do that offline here and then uh, I'll, I'll show you the result. All right, I got all the sort of uh, base stuff trimmed off around him here. And again, I don't think for the purposes of this lab, you don't need to beat yourself up getting you know super tight in there. Um, now we're pretty close to being able to, to sort of calculate the volume. However, there's one problem here. And if we flip him upside down, we can see that he's hollow, right? He looks like a, uh, a chocolate Easter bunny, right? They, they, there's just nothing inside. And in order to calculate the volume, we got to close this part uh, up, okay? So under tools here, we can go to mesh, and then we want this option of close holes. And uh, it's gonna give us some options here. We can just go ahead and so jack this all the way up to 100%, and that's just gonna close up everything. And we can hit okay. And you can see now that it has actually created a surface here at the bottom. So, so Darth Buddha at this point is watertight, right? Uh, there, he's a, an enclosed volume um, space, okay? And at this point now we can do the volume estimation. And so it's under tools, uh, mesh, and then measure area and volume. And it gives us the volume of Darth Buddha in cubic millimeters, so almost 21,000 cubic millimeters, and that's gonna be, what, 21 cubic centimeters, right? Which is pretty darn close to his actual volume. I did a, a volumetric displacement on him, and um, I got pretty pretty close to 21 cubic centimeters for him, okay? So, uh, so again, you know, close range photogrammetry, um, it's kind of a cool thing to do with Metashape to do these sort of 3D scans of things. Um, you know, we got the volume estimate, um, which a lot of times is what we're looking for from a, from a science application of close range photogrammetry, but there's other things that we could do as well. So uh, we could actually uh, export this model um, as like uh, an OBJ file uh, that we could bring into a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an app for 3D printing and then create a 3D print of some object that we've created in Metashape, right? So there's there's lots of things that you can you can do with this. So uh, yeah, hope this works out for you and, uh, and good luck. Mm -hmm.